Good evening everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose and tonight, um, it's a story uh, that actually goes back to 2014 but there was a very recent show on, it, uh, on Sky Crime and it was called I Love You, Now You Die um, and I've got to admit, when I've seen that, um, I knew of the case um, but I thought, oh, it's going to be like a made-for-TV movie. It, even though it was on Sky Crime, I thought it was going to be that kind of like a reconstruction, but it wasn't. It was the full documentary. You see the, um, you know, the actual court goings on, the sentencing. Uh, it's a very interesting documentary. It's two-parter. It's quite long. It's about an hour and 20 minutes each part. But it's such an interesting case. And in the first part, is what, if you know of the story, you would have heard. Um, and it's basically about a young girl called Michelle Carter uh, and a boy called Conrad Roy III. And in 2012, these two, who were 16 at the time, um, went on like a holiday on their vacation, this in America. Um, and yet, uh, they both lived in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, oh God, I knew I was going to mess this up, Massachusetts, Mass <laughs> sorry, Massachusetts, I think you know which state I'm talking about, but that's where they lived, I'm going to scoot, look, go over that, um, and they went on holiday to Florida, and they met, and they got on, and they kind of got each other, um, and they went back home, uh, after the, the week or so, and they started staying in touch on Lowy. Um, <laughs> so much so that being online became their relationship um, that went on for two years. And what you would have heard is that in the last six months of their uh, said relationship, um, they met each other apparently a maximum of four or five times. Um, and it was said that at the end of, well, at, at those six months, she, uh, Michelle, was encouraging Conrad to end his life, to kill himself. That's what's been put out there. That's what's said in the first half of the documentary. That's what I'd heard about it, um, that this girl had manipulated this boy um you know he he loved her he'd done anything everything anything and everything for her or lying um you know and she encouraged him to kill himself and how this came about was on july the 13th 2014 when conrad was 18 um he went to the parking lot of a kmart um and i don't know how you said but you put the poi into the car and it's carbon monoxide poisoning I believe um, and he kills himself and he was found later on um, and the police who appear on the show as well thought it was very it sounds very but cut and dry a young lad 18 year old has got a history of mental health issues he has you know he did um, and he killed himself and that was what the uh, autopsy record showed. It was suicide. That, that was it. But they got hold of his phone. He had his phone on him in the car. The battery had died by this time. But when they charged it up to have a look at the phone, there was all these text messages from Michelle Carter. And as they started looking, there was thousands upon thousands of messages between the two um, but as they're looking they can see that there's an encouragement from this girl to kill himself and these text messages um, and they got his laptop so direct messages as well were released to the public they were released so on these messages it says you know when he this is from michelle to conrad when are you gonna do it you've got to do it today he's going you know i'm not too sure i don't know how i feel about it no 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 you've said you do it now you've got to do it 
you know, got to follow through. You know, you can hang yourself, you can use a knife, you can use tablets. This is how many tablets you would need to kill yourself. You know, all these messages were released to the public and it didn't look good for Michelle. Uh, I've got to say, you know, the public condemned her beyond belief. This poor boy, this poor boy who needed help um, and all he found was a, a girl that he loved who convinced him to follow through and kill himself. And, you know, the, there was an outpouring of hatred for this girl, absolute hatred. Um, now, the text messages were there, there for everyone to see. Um, she did send them. There's no two ways about it. And I've got to say, from me, if that was my son, um, that I should be glad the police got hold of her first. Um, but it wasn't as cut and dry as m most people believe. It wasn't. I'll tell you what I think at the end. But in the second half of this documentary, it looks like it's two parts, um, it digs deeper into her history. Now, Michelle Carter, all I can say, she wasn't a wild girl. She wasn't a wild girl at all. Um, Comrade wasn't a wild boy. They both had severe mental health issues when they met. It was kind of like a kindred spirit, likened to Romeo and Juliet. You know, um, and of, of all the people the two of them could have met, they met each other. Um, and what it doesn't say is for the first 18 months of this, I shouldn't do this, but I will, relationship, all online. Um, you know, they discussed their feelings, their, their mental issues, and he was constantly talking about killing himself. She, the what? I have a lot of messages of this girl saying, you know, we can get you help. You know, we can, we, please don't do it. You know, messages you would expect to see from a girlfriend. You, she did, she did. I can't sit here and lie because of my own feelings on it. You know, they're the fact she did originally for 18 months try and talk him around. And Conrad on his side started doing a blog and in a, a YouTube blog um, for mental health issues and he said it was helping him it was helping him um, <clears throat> and we don't know what his issues were we don't realise why he was so depressed you know it was found out there is a, a part on it where it said that he was in altercation with his dad but his dad on the show gives no apologies for the altercation he said Conrad came at him and like he do again, he gave him a slap, and the police were called. The dad was arrested for assault, um, you know. And like, but on the show, he says he would do it again, you know. So, not that I agree with that, but what I'm saying is, his comrade was so such an angry boy. He came at his dad. His dad offered no apologies for it. So, I don't think comrade was um, abused at home. I don't think the mental illness came from that. Um, there was no other mention that it was an ongoing thing. Um, so there wasn't really that side. Um, and the, his mum and dad did break up and it was said that that could have fragmented and caused his mental... Or maybe he was just... He just had mental health issues, no underlying problems. He just did. Um, and he was getting help, and Loxay was doing this blog. Um, and on her side, Loxay, they, they both had mental health issues. It came out that Michelle um, lived 90% of the time in a fantasy world. And when I say fantasy, oh, I mean fantasy, like when the, there was thousands thousands upon thousands of messages between this couple and so it took the place took several police officers to sit there take it home at night and read all of these messages and 
one of them spotted, um, I don't know if it was a policeman or one of the journalists involved, but one of them picked up that the loans she was using to Conrad were from um, TV shows and mainly um, a show called Glee. Now, I don't know Glee. I, 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 I'm, what do they call it? Are they Glebes or something? Glebes. I'm not, I'm not one of them. You know, I've never watched the show. It looks, you know, insane. It's just not something I'd watch. So, but yeah, and in the, when you're watching the, the, the trial and it cuts to these people, they, they show you clips of the show and then her messages where she uses the word, you know, the word for word to Conrad. Now, obviously, Conrad mustn't have been a Glee fan or any of these, like, chick flick kind of program. He obviously wasn't a fan because he wasn't picking up on what she was saying. And she said these quotes a lot. It was really odd. Now, Michelle... It's a shame, but Michelle, it, it seemed that all Michelle wants was a friend, you know, but Michelle was a very um, needy friend. So they also, obviously taking her phone and everything else, they send messages to other people that she'd sent. And they brought into the court a few of her friends, I think there was three, who basically testified that this was a girl who no one particularly, not, not liked, but she she didn't really, she was quite a lonely girl. She was she was quite a lonely girl, Michelle was. And the three that came in to testify basically said that the reason they could, they weren't, um, they wouldn't see her out of school and they wouldn't meet up with her out of school was because of how needy she was. And you, you read the messages and it was like, do you want to hang out tonight? No. Do you want to do this? No. It was very uh, pummeled them. And because they weren't friends like that, they were like, it, you know, the messages back weren't bad. They were like, no, I'm busy tonight. No, thank you. You know, they kept it nice. But this girl, there's kind of a saying uh, where I'm from. It's, it, it's terrible. It's got a bed. <laughs> and you've got someone constantly. And although you can sit there and be like, oh, my God. I suppose you don't think about their feelings at that age. I suppose you don't think, this this girl just wants a bit of my toy. That's all she wants. You don't think like that. So to, to, to just say, no, I'm busy. At that age, you don't think about it if it's not someone you feel you can be friends with. You know, it's not like when you're an adult and you learn tact and, you know, you put people's feelings, you know, you think about that. You don't as a teenager. So, yeah, they were quite dismissive of that. And she had that friend in Conrad. She had that with him. Um, but there was two characters in Glee. Um, and it was said that she, in her fantasy world, believed herself to be. Um, it was a, a brunette character who was with... A guy in the film. Now these these actors were together in real life, and it's very sad. But the the male actor um, killed himself, and you know the the female actress was on show. She was devastated. You know she had a, a pouring out of you know a sympathy to her. Um, on the show, they actually filmed um, an episode where he'd done the same on the show or he died I'm not sure if he if he harmed himself I, I can't I, I haven't watched the show but he was taken out obviously taken out of the show and it said is that where that came from you know she's seen this outpouring of sympathy she'd always seen Comrade and herself as these these two characters from Glee and the fact that in real life they were together but he killed himself and she noticed all this log site outpouring of sympathy for this actress. And it said that in the last six months of the relationship, she changed. And it became, well, if you're gonna do it, do it. You know, there was a there was a, a, a change period and you know it said, did it coincide with what happened with the actor from Glee um, in her fantasy world 
um, don't forget she's a fantasist. Um, you know, she begged for it. She, ne- she needs it. She's a very needy girl. Um, and, yeah, she started encouraging him to, to follow through. Now, Conrad on his side had, had tried to kill himself. You know, this is what I'm saying a lot. He's at her door. I'm not saying it's not. But he did try and kill himself. He, he, you know, he failed in his, in his attempts. Um, you know, his family were trying to get him help. You know, it wasn't out of the blue, let's say, but she practically handed him the rope at, at the end, in a sense of coming up with all these ideas. Now, what was said and what you might have heard is that when Conrad was in the car and the, the toxic, uh, you know, fumes were in the air, he got out of the car because he was getting better, Conrad was. Um, and he got out of the car and pe- it's at this point that people um, were so quick to condemn her because it was said that there was text messages telling her, from Michelle to Conrad telling him to get back in the car. That's not true. The text message that condemned Michelle was one she sent to a friend. Now, this is where it gets very messy for Michelle. Because two days before Conrad killed himself, she told all her friends he was missing. That he'd gone missing. Two days. It was it was called by the prosecution a dry run. She wants to see what people thought. She wants to see what happened. And of course, these girls that really hadn't given her the time of day all of a sudden, like, oh my God, now what are you going to do? Because don't forget, she's been telling people about this guy for the past two years. And they're like, oh my God, what are you going to do? And she's like, oh, I've been speaking to his mom. You know, um, I really want him home. I, you know, I want him safe back. Then she did say, I wonder if he's done it. So she'd obviously shared with them that he was suicidal. Um, but it wasn't until two days later that Conrad did act. When she was telling her friends on these messages that he was missing, she was talking to Conrad at the same time, you know, through the DMs or texts. Or This girl was crazy. I'm sorry, I've got to say it's crazy. You know, it was... I say crazy, but... Was she to have come up with what? But at the same time, you think, how did she come up with that? What brought that? And it's a show. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know. But, um, yeah, she she does this. Then, of course, Comrade is in the car. Um, and when it came out that he killed himself, and, of course, she's telling all her friends about it, she's saying, I think it's my fault to one of the girls and the girls are no you can't say that you know he 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 tried before it's not your fault you did everything you could for him she goes well no we got out of the car and phoned me and i told him to get back in she said that to one of the girls so that was what was said by her to another girl that she'd said to comrade but given the fact of what a fantasy she was, did she? <clears throat> did she? There's actually no written proof, no transcripts, no text, no nothing to say that she specifically told Conrad to get back in the car. What all there is is um, phone calls to her during the time of him being in the car. And if they're 47 minutes long and then 43 minutes long, and so it said that during that time, his phone dad said, I'm scared, I don't want to go through with it. And she's got him back in the car. But it's it's not hearsay as such, but it is. Um, and that's where it's, it's difficult here because she, the outpouring was specifically, you ask anyone about this first, oh, it's the girl who told him to get back in the car and kill himself. He didn't want to do it, but she told him to get back in. That's what that's based on. And it goes as far as saying there was text messages to Conrad telling him to get back in, but there wasn't. That wasn't the case, and it was proven. Um, but 
it's 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 true. It's the prosecution put across if she hadn't been sending those messages, would he still be here? You know, she didn't try and get him help. You know, there's proof of what she was saying to him and everything else. Um, and she didn't get in touch with his mom or anyone else and tell them what he was planning. So the charge against um, Michelle was involuntary manslaughter, um, saying her incessant texts to comrades constituted wanton and reckless conduct. Now, the defence was saying, this is what I'd like you to please comment on. I'd really like, I'm, I'm very torn about this case. Um, and I'll tell you why. It was something the defence said. He's like, where is the line with free speech? Where, where is that line? Because if you told, to, you know, it's a, it's a saying, if I told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? But if you did tell someone, jump off that bridge and they do it, is that your fault? She was a hundred miles away. She was not physically there. They say she was virtually there, you know, in, in, in the virtual world, in the online world. But she was not physically there. They'd only met five times in the two years. Um, you know, the, there's only her word to say she told him to get back in the car. It's already been proven. She's a fantasist. She's not right. Uh, they both they both had proof of you know there was both proof on both sides that there was mental illness, and where does that freedom of speech line be? You know, but as I said at the beginning, if that was my boy, and the situation was exactly the same, I wouldn't be sympathetic. I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. In my eyes taking out the fact of whether she told him to get back in the car or not, which is, you know, what a lot of people's opinions are based on. The incessant text messaging, as the, you know, the the charge was, she, oh, it was just, he was constantly pushed. He was constantly got out. Are you doing it today? You know, let me know if you're doing it. Why haven't you done it yet? You know, you're never going to do it or not. You'd say what it was. It was constant. Um, and if I do believe that she she said, stop it, get back in the car. Um, then, you know, yeah, it's she deserved a charge of guilty. She did. Um, and what also done Michelle no favours was after all this happened, if you remember me saying that she... Um, had been in touch with a friend saying he was missing and then he killed himself and then all of a sudden just like the actress from Glee this outpouring of, of sympathy for her come from everywhere you know this what girl that was once a loner that nobody noticed and nobody really wants to hang about with all of a sudden had Friends left right and centre, people messaging her, you know, all of a sudden she was holding charity events and appearing in newspapers in the middle of sports players, you know, go fund me page, you know, the whole lot, she went all out. And that was another thing that done her in because, you know, there was no, there was no period where she was mourning or, you know, she was devastated about it. It was straight away. And don't forget, if you think about it, it was two days beforehand when she was saying he was missing when he wasn't. So it's so hard because mental illness now, um, you know, it, it's out there, you know, we're constantly being informed of different mental illnesses and why this has happened and why someone's done this and what more what happens in their past. You know, um, the, the reason all... all Oh, what to call I was about to say excuses then. I'm very, very sorry um, if that offends you. But I just find sometimes you you can't excuse it. You can't. You can't. So Michelle, um, yeah, she was found guilty. It was Commonwealth versus Michelle Carter. Um, and she was found guilty. Um, and on. 2018, 
um, because there was a lot of appeal. She started a 15-month sentence. That's all she got. She got 15 months. Um, and it was in February 2019, I believe. So she'll be released very soon if she's not already. Like I say, I've done this from the show on Sky Crime. I love you. Now you die. So that's where we're up to when I watch the show. And, and I just really love your views on it because I've gone back and forth. And if you watch the program, you you will go back and forth. You're, you're so angry at this girl. And then you kind of pull it back and you're like, oh, my God. You start to feel for her. You start to think, what a shame. And then you bounce back again. And you're like, but you reveled in this. You, this was your big moment. It was like um, I seen a true crime film um, on one of the... Uh, Sky, uh, Sky True Story channels. It was called um, Death of a Cheerleader, and it was a very, it was, it was very, very similar. It was a girl who, you know, no one really noticed. She just wanted to be popular. She ends uh, killing the head cheerleader. She stabs her on her on a front porch, um, and overnight she kind of gets this popularity and she starts dating, you know, a football player and. It's a very similar story. It's about this need for popularity um, in this fantasy world. And yes, there's definitely mental issue, health issues there because it's not normal behaviour. It's not behaviour of normal normal people in society. Please don't be offended by the word normal again. You have to be so careful with everything you say. But um, I'd like your opinion on, on the mental health side and also on the freedom of speech side. You know, where's the line? She wasn't there. You know, she was 100 miles away, I believe. Yeah, they lived in Massachusetts. No, an hour away, sorry, she was an hour away. But she wasn't there, she was nowhere near me. Um, you know, could, could it be that you go, oh, go and jump off a bridge, or go and drop dead? Do you want to be in prison for saying that? If someone does in fact drop dead, you know, the same day? I don't, I don't know, but... I do believe she encouraged it. Um, yeah, I just love to say if it was my son. I, yeah, I, I, there'd be no forgiveness there. There wouldn't be mental health issues or not. There wouldn't be. But I love your opinion. I genuinely would. This is one story I really would like to have your comments on and tell me what you think. Um, obviously, if I've got anything wrong, please let me know. If you want to watch a show, it's on Sky Crime. Um, I love you, now you die. And yeah, just love your opinions on this one, I really would. And my next story, just while I've got you, um, oh, it's a vicious one. It's called The Toy Box Killer. Um, if you know the story, involuntary noise is thrown at you again, but oh, it's such a shocking case. So I'm going to look at that one next time. And um, thank you for joining me this time. Really appreciate a like or a comment. Uh, definitely a comment on this one. Um, and if you haven't, I'd love for you to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. So, yes, thank you so much for joining me again. And I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.